Are you struggling with creating more tension and dramatic interest in your Ableton projects? Are you overcomplicating the process or not sure which tools to use? Well, I'm going to share with you a very simple and effective technique, which I use time and time again in every project and release that I do. I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. So you've already heard the before and after, and I'll just quickly explain what we're working with. So I've got a kick here, which is taken from a, a sample pack that I made, which now resides in my Digitax and Ottrack. Got a nice kick there, quite fat and full. And then we've also got these drums, which are taken from the Syntax. So just a clap and a hat. We've also got this bass, which is taken from the Syntax. And then this really nice uh, percussive melodic synth, again from the Syntax. So I thought that was quite nice. And then we've got this box, which I'm not sure if I'm going to use yet. Just a bit of a loop that I created. And what I'm going to do for now is just focus on the drum bus. And I'm going to recreate this drum effects rack that I've got here. So I'll just let you have another listen to that. So I'm not going to play the whole run here, but you can hear it's this gradual swell of tension and effect. When the kick comes in, you can see it ducks there as well. So the main idea of this tutorial is I'm going to show you how to build this um, effects rack, which you can use not just on drums, but you can use it on um, other elements as well. So you could use it on the bass and the uh, melodic synth. Um, with different settings, you can adjust it accordingly. But the idea is that you create a rack, you can save it, so you can use it time and time again, speed things up. It also saves time because it allows you to map multiple parameters to one or two knobs as you can see here so if we open up the the map panel you can see i've got one two three four um parameters mapped so it's three of those are to one knob i used to map all four to one knob but i'll show you why that i've got two one for the feedback and one for the send so you can see there i've got uh feedback reverb level and reverb decay you can go further and start adding more but i'm going to just keep it simple for this one and that speeds up the process so instead of for that one knob, instead of having three parameters that you have to automate separately, it's just um, off and on. So you bring the send up, and then you can adjust the feedback there. And then once you bring the send down, it obviously cuts the dry signal and stops it from going into the echo, creating that wet signal. So what I'm going to do is just take you through the motions of recreating this. So yeah, it's a good time saver, and we're able to save it. Once you learn this technique, you can try it with different effects and come up with your own um, different effects racks as well, more advanced stuff. And I'll do that in future tutorials. So this is the most simplified uh, version of this technique, really. And it's super useful. It works every time, depending on what settings you do. So let's build it from scratch. So what I'm going to do is bring the echo up and then I'm going to bring the dry wet down. So we can just hear a little bit of the dry and a little bit of the wet. So it's on 1.8 dotted there, but I'm going to go for 1.16 on notes now the key things that we want to change is we've got the feedback that creates more intensity we've got the reverb send and also the decay so they're the kind of main three parameters that we're going to adjust first and i'm also just going to quickly set up this so it's a bit nicer sounding um so what i might do is bring the wet all the way up so i can just listen to the wet signal and bring the output down because I'm going to just bring up that input there to distort the uh, wet signal a little bit. And we've put it, also put it on ping pong there as well. And I might just adjust the filter just to let them hats come through in the top end. Around there sounds quite nice. Another little trick that I like to do is add a little bit of ducking. Bring the release right down. So you can hear it ducks it out the way of the transients from the dry signal. And then I also like to add a bit of wobble as well. So with the wobble, 
just adds a little bit more of that kind of analog um, uneven tip delay effect where it's kind of wobbling the pitch a little bit. So I'll just bring this all the way up so you can hear what that sounds like. So it's just really like wobbling the delay times around. Just think of it as an LFO on the delay time, but a random one. Let's go for around 12% to give it that really nice, or maybe a bit lower, that nice analog warmth kind of sound. And then I think that's pretty much it for the setup. So what I'm going to do now is just group this into a chain. Now the end result's probably going to sound a little bit different from this first drum effects, just because of the nature of the way we're kind of um, uh, tweaking it as we go. I'm not doing a direct copy of the first one. So let's call this one drum effects two for later for when we save it. And then you can see we've got this chain here. Well, I'm going to add in another chain by right clicking below it and going to create chain. This one can be our dry chain. So if I solo that, just the drums coming through, nothing on them. And this chain is the wet chain. So that's with the echo on. And you'll notice that I've got the wet all the way up to 100%. This one's fully wet, one's fully dry. So the next thing that I want to add into this chain is a utility. So this is going to be our send volume. So if I go to the other side of Ableton and put in a return track, you can see we've got this send knob. This is basically what I'm doing. So if you've used send returns before, you basically send the dry signal to the return and on the return channel, you put a bunch of effects on there fully wet. I'm doing the same thing, but I'm actually doing it on the track itself. Now, this is something I do quite often. It just kind of contains everything for me and I know where everything is and it's easier to automate as well. I've got more control over stuff. It's just my preferred way of doing it. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is, and also it allows you to save it in a rack as well, um, which you can't do with the send returns in an Ableton project. You can't just save that as a rack. So with this, what I'm going to do is do that first mapping. So the gain knob, I'm going to map that to macro two. I'm going to call this send. And you want to watch out with the, the macro settings at the top. So the max needs to be zero or lower, not 36 plus because it's just going to be crazy so if i bring this all the way down start to bring it up now you can hear it gradually coming up in volume what i would do is put it all the way to zero and then set the dr the sorry not the dry the wet set the wet volume so bring it down a bit so we're trying to find the maximum i'm going to go for minus 8 db i think on the last one i went for quite low actually but i think um, i boosted the volume on the output on the other echo so yeah for that minus 8 db on there so we've got this send now which we can automate in the arrangement and next i want to set up this first macro which is our feedback macro so i'm going to go to map i'm going to map feedback and it's a case of just finding the maximum and minimum amount you want for that knob <laughs> obviously for this one you want to make sure that you're bringing that maximum down before you bring the knob up because it's just going to feed back and start to create um, some really gnarly high pitched tones which are going to wreck your ears. So let's just bring that send up. Find our maximum. I'd say just around 94. And our minimum. Maybe around 45. And then the next one that I want to do is map the reverb send to the same knob. So for this one, I'm going to bring it up. 100% is a little bit too much. And then a minimum. Maybe that's a bit too much still. I'll have the minimum all the way down, actually. And the next one to do is the decay. So we're just tweaking these feedbacks a little bit too high on the delay. Trying to find a sweet spot for that. And I might tweak. Tweaking the filter. And then just bringing that wet down a little bit more. And the feedback down just a little bit more on that. It's kind of getting a bit silly there. 
So that's pretty much it for the mapping of the knob. So now what I'm going to do is just name that macro one uh, feedback. And if you want, obviously, you can color these as well. So let's give them nice little colors. You can be quite particular with this if you're making a lot of racks and have a color coding system. For that, I'm just going to go for blue and orange for now. If you are enjoying all of the sounds in this project, you can get access to all of the samples and the Ableton project file and the effects racks by joining my Patreon. So the link is in the video description below. You'll also get access to a Discord community and a monthly Q&A with myself where I'll be answering your direct questions and also giving you track feedback. It's going to be a very fruitful experience for myself and everybody involved and I'd love to have you there. So yeah, just click on the link below and now let's get back to the tutorial. What I need to do now is just tweak this and make it a little bit better. So I'm going to put in a compressor. So let's go to dynamics compressor. And this is going to be a sidechain compressor. So I'm going to open up this tab at the top, click sidechain, go to the drop down menu audio from the kick. And then I'm just going to go to a different uh, tab on here so I can see it better. And I'm just going to bring this loop brace over so the kick's playing with the drums and I'm going to bring that wet up and now we just want to adjust maybe we'll mute that so we've just got the wet coming through just in, adjusting the threshold and also the release time so we get like a nice bounce now it's up to you if you can go super heavy in Daft Punk or just a little bit more subtle. Yep, that works fine for me. Right, so we've put that in and then I'd say one last thing which I didn't do on the um, previous rack is to add an EQ. So I'm going to go for EQ8. Put that just before the side chain. And we're just going to get rid of those low frequencies. I could have done it actually on the filter here, but I'm going to do it after. Let's bring that back up to have a listen. Yep, that works for me. So we've built the rack, and now what I want to do is test it by drawing in some automation for the build section. So what I'm going to do is show you how to set up automation lanes to make arranging a lot easier. And to do this, what you do is click on the first parameter which you want to automate. So I'm going to go for send. Make sure you've got the automation arm on. And then you press this little plus button here. And that you can see that it's made its own lane underneath the main one. And this is the send lane. And then I'm going to click on feedback. And it's going to add feedback on there as well. So now it's just a case of drawing in some simple automation. So for the send, I want it to open up gradually over time. What I might do to speed up this process actually is just do a half build this time instead of a full um, 16 bar one. And then, yeah, draw that up over time and then cut, cut it right at the end. So at the end, this cuts off. So it doesn't send any more of the dry signal into the echo after this point. And then with the feedback, I'm going to do the same, but I'm actually going to let it run past the drop. So then we get this nice feedback till. So let's have a listen to that. So there's a couple of things that I want to do actually. So what I'm going to do is the send. I'm going to bring that up a little bit higher for the beginning. There we go. So when it comes in here, yeah, that's much better. And then what I tend to do is to just bring that down over time so it's not feedbacking all the time. So what I'm going to do now is play it with everything in. But before we do that, I just want to quickly um, show you the percussive melodic um, element from the syntax. So you can see with this one, I've, I've used a similar technique, but I haven't made the rack for this one. But you can see here, I've used the echo and I'm automating the on off and I'm also automating reverb decay, reverb send, reverb, um, sorry, not reverb, delay feedback. And you can hear over this section, it starts to gradually raise up.
and you can hear it cuts off at the end. So yeah, just to show you that, because you can use the same technique on other elements as well. I've been a little bit lazy with that one and just dialed it in quickly on there. So let's have a listen with everything in now. Actually, we'll start it around here. So yeah, that sounds great. I really like that. And then what we can do next actually is just save that rack. So the way that you save it is you basically name it. So you can see there, drum effects two. Um, I'm just gonna put test next to it because I've already saved a few of these before. And I'm gonna press save and you can see it comes up here. And then what I can do is I can give that a color. So I've got an effects racks um, folder there. So let's click on effects racks to give it that little color. And if we go into effects racks, you can see it shows up there. So what I'm able to do is every time I start a new project and I want a quick drum effects rack, I can just go in here, I can drag that in like so into a new project. And then you can see I've got two knobs there for automating. And when I create a new track, it's just simply a case of putting it in for the build, going like that on one of them and leaving that up and then going to the next one and just bring in the send up. It is so easy and it just speeds up my workflow. So that's how I build effects racks. So let me know in the comments if you found that useful. And if you've got any questions, just ask away and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Hit the subscribe button so you can keep up to date with the content that I'm pushing out. And what I would recommend that you do next is to go ahead and watch this next video for more tips and tricks which are going to help you on your music production journey.